Shall we? We shall. Cool. All right. And it's officially official. We're live, my friends. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for those of you who are online right now. My name is Mariana, and I'm with the ISA Education Commission, and we've been getting really great feedback about this whole lockdown series project that we've been doing. The initial idea of it was to provide content that showed the depth of slacklining and the culture behind it. And something that we wanted to do was also show something that reflected the lifestyle of the sport and how many of us that participate in it are intelligent, open-minded, conscientious people who love nature, who love the environment. And so given the craziness that we find our world in right now, because of COVID-19, we thought the topic of veganism was something that we really wanted to highlight for the international community. And so here I am with one of my super friends from Toronto, vegan activist and slackliner extraordinaire, Adam. Hey, everybody. Uh, first, I'd just like to say a sincere thank you for joining us in this live stream today. I know to many that the thought of being vegan is a daunting one, and it was the same with me. And it's all right to feel that way, because making big lifestyle changes is never easy, especially habits that have been ingrained in us since we were children. So just know that we really appreciate you keeping an open mind towards changing one of the most established habits we have, which is what we eat. I know there are plenty of questions surrounding the idea of being vegan, and I hope that we can address as many of them as we can in this presentation. But first, I'd like to talk about what I think does a great disservice to the movement as a whole, and that is all the false ideas about what veganism, what people think veganism is. Many within the movement get lost in blaming and shaming, and there can be a lot of ego and tension around discussions about being vegan with family and friends. So I'd like to quickly touch base on what I think being vegan isn't. First off, there we go. being vegan is not a moral standpoint where you can judge others. Being vegan has nothing to do with being better than anyone. Being vegan is about compassion and ethics, not ego and moral superiority. In my five years being vegan, I can say that the change has undoubtedly been a really positive one for me. It's helped me better align with the caring, aware person that I strive to be and has given me the sense that the choices that I make every day, however small they may seem, are helping to move the world in a better direction. But at the same time, I know to always communicate this message with empathy because I know that I was exactly once in that position that maybe you are in right now where you don't understand it or you need more information about it. So I'm not better than anyone else for being vegan, but I do believe that I have become a better version of myself. Uh, number two. <laughs> there we go. It's not um, about being perfect. It's about being better. Many assume that vegans hold an all or nothing or extremist approach where you can't make a mistake or you aren't vegan. In fact, every vegan, including myself, has made mistakes and eaten non-vegan food or purchased non-vegan products. It's a consequence of living in a non-vegan world. Well, I, uh, it's simply about doing the best you can to avoid harming animals or other beings whenever possible. Will I still kill a mosquito? Yeah, of course I will. Would I, in a survival situation where my life depended on it, would I kill an animal to eat it? Yeah, I would. But right now, and probably for the rest of my life, I have no necessity to cause unnecessary harm to animals. And so I'll do my best for the rest of my life to cause as little harm as possible. Number two is it's not about being a diehard animal lover. You don't even have to love animals in order not to eat them. You just have to value their lives higher than you value the taste pleasure that you get from consuming them. So I have no personal connection with any farm animals in the same way that I may have no personal connection with anybody listening to this presentation. But I would never wish anything bad to happen to anyone I didn't know. And it's the same with animals. Being vegan is simply respecting an animal's right to live and be free. And finally, being vegan is not about being a tree hugger or a dirty hippie, an anti-vaxxer or any of these stereotypes. It's simply about avoiding causing unnecessary harm whenever possible. And really, Adam, that's it. It's, it's not an all or nothing commitment. And it, it just starts with something as simple as meatless Mondays or Veganuary, trying a 22-day challenge. We've got a few posts, of, a few links that we've put in the description to help you guys out later with some resources. But it's just educating yourself more about climate change and animal agriculture. And, you know, for me, it was a, a journey of many steps that started with reducing my meat consumption from two to three times a day to two to three times a week. And then two to three years of being lacto-ovo vegetarian. And then, and then I just knew too much to, to be okay with consuming dairy products the way that I was. So whenever people ask me why I stopped eating meat, my, my answer is really simple. It's, it's, it's bad for the human body and it's bad for the planet. And what was a simple test for me to try to learn, learn how to make new meals and have more variety in what I ate 
led to a whole lifestyle change that I found to be really, really positive. And I honestly never thought that I would quit eating meat entirely, but I found the changes in my body to be so noticeable that I didn't really want to go back. And a lot of vegans will tell you the same thing about feeling lighter, having more energy, feeling and looking shinier, and generally feeling more positive. And so veganism is just sort of taken a, a more mainstream mainstream uh, stage right now in the world because there's quite a few notable athletes at the top of their game in their respective sports who achieve their peak performance after going vegan. So, you know, right here we're looking at the, the arguably the greatest tennis players, Nova, Novak Djokovic and, and Serena Williams and her sister Venus, um, an English Premier League soccer player, Jermaine Defoe, Colin Kaepernick, who, you know, just seems to generally be a very conscientious person and cares about big issues. Um, yeah, another football player, Ricky Williams, George Larac, who was a who was a who was an enforcer, like a, like he was paid to be in the NHL and like start fights and and hurt people and stuff. And now he's vegan. Um, and then we've also got a bunch of endurance athletes. You know, some some of the strongest people in the world, Patrick Baboumian. Uh, you know, who has a famous quote where he's just like, you know, his friends ask him how he can be as strong as an ox when all he eats plants. And he says, have you ever seen an ox eating anything other than plants? And, you know, Adam and I can also attest to the fact that veganism doesn't keep you from being a ninja because, you know, we high line, we slack line, we do flow activities. We're very fit and active individuals. Yeah. Um, so for all of you, I highly recommend checking out The Game Changers on Netflix. It's a documentary that uses evidence-based research to demonstrate all the ways that being plant-based is superior to overall health. One of the key reasons why being plant-based will make you a better athlete, and maybe even slacker, is due to the anti-inflammatory nature of plant foods. Vegetables and fruits contain loads of antioxidants that help muscles relax and reset after they've been worked. Thus, your recovery time is greatly improved. Also, due to not taking in lots of saturated fats and cholesterol from meat, your circulation is improved because your veins and arteries are clearer. Within my own Slackline community, us vegans rage just as hard as everybody else, if not harder, and are able to get right back out the next day. It is proven that meat, uh, diets high in meat are more likely to result in illness and disease later in life, such as heart disease and various forms of cancer. It is also proven that a plant-based diet can safeguard us from these common diseases. Yeah, you definitely start feeling physically different in a very positive way. I started loving food more also when I'm vegan because I felt like I was no longer fighting it. <laughs> Check it out. There's a couple of uh, pictures of us being ninja vegans. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I, I didn't feel like going to sleep after a barbecue or, or feeling sick because something was undercooked. And then I started learning more about the environmental impact and, and I just stopped looking away from the animal abuse. If you're well aware of the next curve to flatten after COVID-19, then you know that we need to deal with climate change. And if you're concerned about the environment, as you should be, you've got a, another reason to learn more about veganism and, and how to spread the word as well. 2020 really kicked everybody in the face with COVID-19, which is a pandemic during our lifetime that has made a lot of people realize that the old normal just wasn't great. And then we got hit with the information that most of these major viruses that we've dealt with in the last 30 to 40 years are zoonotic. And so that means that they came from animals, wet markets and industrial agriculture, gross, gross, gross places. Now, before I went vegan, I went vegetarian first because I learned about factory farming through a short animated film called The Matrix. We've linked it below. And The Matrix, you know, yeah, it, it was it was a cartoonish take on on the the heinous nature of factory farming and and you know you don't if you're squeamish to see what the real stuff look like looks like because it's it is really gross it's it's pretty tra traumatizing you know this will give you the idea and this prompted me to quit fast food i had read fast food nation as well by eric schlosser and i love burgers but i was against evil so I started eating meat that was from a local butcher because it was less evil and this may have been less evil and somewhat less harmful for the environment but that animal still didn't want to die. And then I also learned that beef has the greatest impact on the environment of anything else we eat. So the fact, and, and yeah, and still the fact remained that something had to die so that I could eat. And I, I knew that there had to be better alternatives. Yeah, I want to follow up with Mariana's point about environment, environmental impacts of animal agriculture, because I think few really grasp how bad the situation is and how sustainable this current system is for the future of our species and even the planet. 
Firstly, let's talk about emissions. Livestock farming produces more greenhouse gas emissions than all the transport systems on our planet combined. So that includes cars, boats, planes, and anything else that uses fossil fuels to get around. If we want to get serious about reducing our emissions, then animal agriculture just simply has to go. Animal agriculture requires a ton of land uh, and the animals we eat require loads of food. In fact, in the United States, 80% of the crops go to feed the animals that they eat. Worldwide, animal agriculture requires a staggering 33% of total, of total usable land. Do you remember the burning of the Amazon that was going on a while back? It was a few months ago. It, it continues to happen to this day. Well, that's being done to clear land for animals to graze and to grow crops to feed animals. Did you know that to produce one kilogram of beef, it requires 150 kilograms of grain and 15,000 liters of water? And how about the waste produced by all these massive animals? In the U.S., animals produce 500 million tons of poop and pee every single year. Often this waste is contained in these massive estuaries, which are essentially lagoons of pee and poo and blood. This waste is known to pollute waterways through leakage and runoff, infected lakes and rivers with animal feces and blood. Lovely. Consider these enormous environmental impacts and then imagine a future where we continue to eat animals in their byproducts. As our population increases, the demand for flesh will also increase, and the world is soon going to reach a tipping point where it can no longer sustain the heavy demands of animal agriculture. This is not a world I want to live in, and I hope you feel the same. And going vegan is the most direct thing you can do to decrease the demand for animal products and thus the environmental load on our planet. When people ask me about my diet, I, I say it's plant-based because the thing about veganism is that it's not just a diet. It's a moral philosophy that extends to a diet. So if you're against deforestation, if you're against environmental destruction, if you're against animal abuse, then simply adapting to a plant-based diet is the single best thing you can do as an individual to take steps against these horrible things that, are, that affect all of us. So there are two well-known YouTube YouTuber vegan activists that we'll discuss a bit more later. But this guy, Joey Carbstrong, who is an Australian ex-convict, ex-gang member, ex-drug addict, uh, who spent some time in jail and did a bunch of thinking, and he decided to turn his life around and do his part to, in helping tortured animals. And so a lot of his videos are, are very, very blunt. He's very blunt. He's very to the point. Um, they're entertaining. They're entertaining. Uh, and, and very, very factual and informational. And these screenshots that we're showing you right now are of a stunt that he and a bunch of other activists, animal activists, pulled by going into a supermarket with video screens to show people what happens to dairy cows and to show them the heinous things that they are contributing to when they buy milk and, and like animal milk. And a lot of people aren't aware of this, you know, so, so Joey and his pals, they go into the supermarket with these screens and they stand in front of it. And it's a pretty funny video in some parts because of his response to the supermarket workers who are like, can I see your ID? And he's just like shrugs them off and says, yeah, I work for the animals, you know, or he says, or, or they're trying to get them to leave. And he's more focused on his moral cause. They threaten to call the cops and he says, yeah, call the cops and tell them animals are being tortured for milk and cheese. And it's just like, whoa, like when you think about it that way, it's, it's, it's pretty awful. So from the vegan's perspective, once you've realized how animal industry and animal industrial agriculture is like an idea straight out of science horror fiction, like it's it's heinous, it's it's terrible. It's it's hard to look at that stuff as food once once you see it that way, once you see all the bad that has to happen for me to have, you know, delicious tasting cheese on a pizza. Um, and I mean, there is delicious tasting cheese. It's, it just comes from plants now because it's 2020 and we've gotten here. We've, we're there, people were there. And, and then to know on top, like on top to know how detrimental it is to the environment, like it's pretty on point when Joey implies the police should be more concerned with what's happening to the animals than his apparent loitering or trespassing in a supermarket. Like he does this because he wants to show the people what they're paying for, buying milk and cheese. They, it's a direct contribution to this animal suffering. If there was a, a dog or a cat that somebody was abusing, somebody would call the cops on them and they would deal with that person as an, as an animal abuser. And there's really no difference between these poor animals on a farm. Yeah, totally. If you uh, look at some of the pictures we have here, uh, when you first go vegan, but you aren't sure how, that's... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I never had any issues <laughs> with cooking coconuts in toaster ovens, but, and then, so we've got like, you know, these jokes, fries, uh, a friend of starving vegans in restaurants everywhere. You will, you will find the occasional restaurant where you can't seem to find anything. 
that's just a consequence of being vegan in a non-vegan world. Sometimes you might just end up with a, with a crummy salad as well. But if you find the right restaurant, and I mean, more restaurants are you know going down this path, you end up finding delicious burgers like these that are super satisfying. And they're like way better for you than eating beef. And also these wonderful bowls. So, you know, plant-based is awesome. Just just get into it. And, and now going... Can I add yeah, on? Ahead, yeah, of course. And if you don't have that stuff, I often joke that I get to order from a VIP menu because I'll often <laughs> say, hey, look, guys, like I, I, I'm trying to keep a plant-based diet. You know, what can we do? And especially when I'm traveling, I often will start off not by saying I'm vegan. I'll say, hey, I'm complicated. I don't eat meat and, uh, and, and dairy makes me sick. What can we do? And then usually they'll be like, oh, yeah, you know, what? we've got some beans, we've got some rice, we've got some potatoes or, you know, yeah, we do have a bunch of vegetables. And and then I get this VIP secret menu, you know, speakeasy kind of kind of meal. So so it's definitely doable. It's definitely doable. Yeah. And so now I want to go back to what Mariana was saying um, about about animal suffering. And I want to touch now on a realization that I had that has really become the core of why I believe in veganism. And I hope it'll resonate with you as well. Simply put, um, suffering sucks. We all avoid for all forms of suffering as much as possible. It's, it's in our nature to avoid suffering. So we're incredibly lucky to live human lives, right? Where we live in modern society, we get a free pass to avoid the kinds of suffering that must be inflicted upon animals on a daily basis. If you imagine the suffering inflicted upon farmed animals, such as cows and pigs and chickens that undergo family separation, mutilation, imprisonment, mistreatment, and ultimately a life ended by a knife in the neck, you realize that it is a fate that you would never in a million years want for yourself. But see, here's the thing. I got to thinking and I realized, wait a minute, that could have been me. Why am I human? It seems to me that it was chance, really. I could have just as easily, if not more likely, been born a farm animal. So when you consider the situation from this angle, it becomes clear that the suffering of farm animals matters because it could have just as easily been you in that position. And even though it isn't you right now, that doesn't mean it isn't happening to a conscious sentient being who doesn't want to die. If you believe like I do that we are all on some way connected, then everybody's suffering, including animals matters. The largest amount of suffering that happens on the planet is in factory farms to the animals that we eat. We slaughter up to 70 billion, 70 billion land animals a year for food. That is an unbearable amount of suffering. It is my belief that the reduction of suffering is the most noble, po noble cause that a person can aspire to. And being vegan is simply the, the easiest thing you can do to help reduce the suffering of these animals. And even if you believe that you've been given a human life for a reason, such as a, a God figure granting you this life or otherwise, to me, that makes the idea of being vegan even more awesome and profound. Because then you just got to ask yourself, how does God treat those at his mercy? How does God treat us? Well, God treats us with kindness and compassion. What qualities do we admire in, in great characters and stories and legends? Kindness and compassion. We as humans have a tendency towards kindness. Being vegan is simply an acknowledgement of that and extending our own compassion to include all beings. And even if you think of animals as deserving of the, or even if you think of animals as deserving of the right not to suffer needlessly. Is that right? <laughs> even if you can't, uh, sorry, even if you can't think of animals as deserving of the right to not suffer endlessly, consider the slaughterhouse workers who for low wages have to slit the throats of young, healthy animals who have no interest in dying. Can you imagine the mental toll that must take on a human being to have to kill thousands of animals every single day? Slaughterhouse workers often suffer terrible PTSD as a result of taking part in death and misery on a daily basis. I've heard stories of pigs going up to slaughterhouse workers and nuzzling them like they, like, like they were little puppies. And then that worker would have to hang that pig up and cut their throat as they were squealing and begging for mercy. It's devastating to imagine, and even more so when you realize that this whole cruel system doesn't even have to exist at all. So being vegan is simply about doing your little part to end this immense suffering for the animals and for us too. And what's crazy is is hearing the COVID breakouts now that are happening in all these animal plants, you know, so maybe there's there's a few changes that are going to be happening now that that'll force people to to start eating less meat. Yeah, it's already happening. So it's already happening. Cool. So my Slackland dirtbag fam, worldwide fam, other than, than helping save the world and animal lives, why should we as dirtbag Slackliners go vegan? So both of us have traveled quite a bit and, and have had the, the pleasure of meeting up at festivals and, and, you know, meeting other slackliners around the world. And what we've both noticed 
is that slacklanders around the world, especially highlanders, love nature. And many of us are conscientious about things like protect, protecting our trees and leaving no trace. And what's cool is that there's a lot of festivals that will offer food to the volunteers and it's usually vegan just to make everything easier, making sure that everyone can eat something that way, not having to worry about undercooking anything, not worrying about, you know, food allergies in the same way. Um, of course, there's different food allergies with veganism, like nuts and, and whatnot. But, you know, of course, they, they like a good festival organizers taking that into consideration, too. But yeah, you don't have to worry about spending a fortune to feed a lot of people. It is it is honestly the cheapest way to feed a large group of people and 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 nothing had to die like bonus. And so other than helping improve your athletic performance, if you do it right, veganism is super well suited for a dirtbag slackliner lifestyle because it is cheap, easy and less likely to make you sick if you're living in a van or camping for a bunch of days and can't refrigerate things. Word. And so, you know, the old school basic vegan staples of, of dried or canned legumes, chickpeas, beans, lentils, your your basic like superfood plant-based proteins are, are cheaper and healthier in comparison to meat. And there's really nothing cheaper than rice. Pasta is also a cheap alternative. They're both easy to cook. Quinoa is an awesome grain because you get your carbs and you get protein out of it. Like it is a superfood. Um, crack wheat bulgur is a bit more expensive too, but again, also higher in, in, in your protein count. But all of these carbohydrate sources are easy to cook. They're dry. They, they're non-perishable. You just add some water, you boil it, and then, and then you, you let it simmer. Um, and, then, and then you have your fruits and veggies, which, which also give you better nutritional value for your money than meat. And so if you've got a garden or a balcony or even a window ledge that gets a lot of light, there are things you can grow and eat for the very small upfront cost of your gardening necessities. Yeah, as Mariana said, the cost of plant protein is dirt cheap. I often feel like a criminal going into a store and getting a block, of, a big block of tofu for like two or three bucks. It's like, it's so cheap. Also, most plant protein sources contain more raw protein than do animal foods per amount of food. And as for plant foods being less calorically dense than animal foods, yeah, this is true. However, this is due to the amount of saturated fats and cholesterol found only in animal foods. It is proven that plant protein sources are better for you as they contain far less bad fats and far more additional nutrients. So by choosing the plant protein over the animal protein, you're getting a more nutrient-dense food for less cost. So here's the thing. There are expensive vegan foods. Processed vegan food can totally be expensive. You know, here's some examples right now of, you know, packaged fake, like, you know, the faux meats and stuff. Um, but yeah, with the, with the increase of more people trying plant-based diets, there are a lot more vegan food available. So, you know, my biggest, my biggest barrier, and, and I'll be honest with you guys, when I was vegetarian and there were vegans in my life and my response was, yeah, but I can't give up cheese and ice cream. I love cheese and ice cream. And what it came down to was like, I didn't love cheese and ice cream more than I loved, you know, cows getting raped by a mechanical arm after having their children stolen from them. And you know, and then I found out that, hey, there's coconut based vegan ice cream. Amazing. You know, the vegan cheeses like they're OK, <laughs> but I guess I haven't tried, tried the right stuff, <laughs> but, but yeah, like I didn't, I didn't miss it. I did, once I stopped eating cheese entirely, even before I had ever tried some good vegan cheese, like I never I didn't really miss it. And so and so, yeah, there's a lot more options. And so, yeah, if you want to if you want a Beyond Burger, they're, they're pricey, but the natural whole foods that are the source for, for the processed stuff, that stuff is definitely cheaper than meat and dairy products. And, and if you have an Instant Pot, which is, a, which is like, it, like a vegan's dream appliance, it is yep. cooking vegan meals is so, so ridiculously easy. A lot of van lifers even have Instant Pots because it makes cooking that easy. And yeah, in addition to the cost saving, a big appeal for me was that I could be lazier in my cooking. Um, in my cooking, in my cleaning, in my food storage, because with vegetables, you don't have to worry about bacteria in the same way as you do with meat and dairy. Meat and dairy are basically flesh and pus. And so just like a hospital has hazardous waste from flesh and pus, the same thing happens from, from having that stuff in, in your fridge, in your kitchen. Like you have to make sure you're, you're super clean with that stuff. Otherwise, you're left dealing with harmful bacteria. You're also less likely to accidentally eat vegetables that go bad because it's really easy to tell when vegetables go bad. But it's really, really easy to get sick from, from chicken or beef that has been undercooked or that you've prepared past its its. Yeah. 
sorry, you just cut off there. There we go. Um, the bacteria situation and food safety situation is another example of why veganism is way more accessible than people think. Other some other reasons include refrigeration. Unlike cow's milk, plant milks can go unrefrigerated for days without consequence. Tofu can go unrefrigerated for days and be unscathed. And as for canned beans, well, they last forever. As well, you aren't really at risk of catching a stomach bug or getting food poisoning if you stick to plants. Yeah, I mean, all foods are perishable, including plants. But as far as lasting longer and not making you sick, plants, I guarantee you, they have the edge. You know those temperature gauges that you use to check the, the heat of meat before you eat it to make sure it's safe to eat? You can chuck those out the window if you're vegan. You can eat tofu raw or slightly cooked, and most vegan food doesn't need to be cooked at all. Yeah, super easy, super easy. Like, there's there's tons of people who are raw vegan. I don't know, I like warm food once in a while, so, you know, and there's tons of great recipes. But, yeah, I'm sure we, we all have a friend, a vegan friend or two, who are, who are doing well with the change in the diet, but we've also known people who have tried going vegetarian or vegan and, and have failed. And, and that was my issue initially because, you know, I thought I could survive off of bread, pasta and cheese. And, you know, so trying a vegan diet just requires some changes in your habits and making dietary changes is a big deal because feeding yourself properly is really, really important. So if your body is used to eating a certain way and you're used to buying the same things at the supermarket every week, changing those consumer habits is going to be a big deal. Yeah. Most people assume that being vegan is difficult due to accessibility, and that is in part true because we don't live in a vegan world yet. <laughs> but however, the, the perceived lack of accessibility is really just the mind being rooted in habit. If eating animal foods is all you're used to, then the notion of finding alternative sources of the nutrients you need is daunting because it's a step away from your comfort zone. But I think this is where we as a community shouldn't have any problem because it was stepping out of habit and into something new that got us on a slack line in the first place, right? Habits are easy to alter with practice. And if that change of habit is for the better, then what are we waiting for? Finding vegan food comes down to changing habits, not compromising on food. Once you make the change, to be vegan, it just becomes your new normal. Like as for me, and I know, I know with Marianne as well, we don't suffer being vegans, we thrive being vegans. So for you, instead of letting your mind tell you that eating plant-based is too hard, I can't try it, just try stepping out of your comfort zone and actively search for the alternatives. And once you do, you'll be amazed, I swear to you, at how easy it really is. So yeah, a lot of people tell me that they tried going vegan or vegetarian and they felt sick or tired. And like I said, I failed because I couldn't just survive on bread, cheese and pasta. And so we're from Canada and, you know, we're going to use it as, as an example, the Canadian food guide. So this was, it's now been updated to 2019, but what we're showing you on screen right now is the 2007 food guide, which had four food groups. It had uh, fruits and vegetables. It had dairy. It had it had meats and alternatives and it had grains. And so, you know, it's, it's, they had dairy in it. It was a completely standalone, standalone um, food, food, group. food, food yeah. group. It was just, thank you. It was just, and it was called actually milk and alternatives. So, you know, the alternatives that I would discuss with people are just like, yeah, you're getting the same stuff out of it. So it would get mentioned, but Canada has a huge dairy industry. We have a lot of cows. Like there's a huge agricultural industry in our country. And then they updated it to 2019 and there was a buzz about it that there was, there was, they were going to take out dairy. And so now if you look at what your, what the suggestion is from our government for you to eat, to be healthy, 50% of your plate is fruits and vegetables. Notice all the colors, different colors. Those are giving you different, different vitamins and nutrients. So a quarter now is, is, you know, your, what was before meats and alternatives. And now they refer to it as protein foods. So yeah, there's a few chunks of meat on there, but there's also your tofu. There's also some, some lentils, some beans, some chickpeas, and then your grains, a variety of grains. You've got your, your, you know, your whole wheat bread, your whole grains, you've got some pastas, you got, I think that's quinoa. Yeah. So as I mentioned, like different colors also mean different vitamins and nutrients. So really this, your simple formula is grains, proteins, and lots of veggies and fruits. Know your calcium sources and your milk alternatives. And there's a lot of information online about vegan diets. And we've chosen our go-to stuff. And as I mentioned earlier, those are going to be in the description below. There's a whole bunch of links that of a few things that you can watch and a few resources that you can check out. Uh, another thing I would recommend, we are not nutritionists or dietitians. We just know what has worked for us based on information that we have found through this wealth of knowledge that's, that's online now, because again, it's 2020 veganism is alive. It's well, it's growing. 
And so I would still recommend if you're going to make the transition or if you've been vegan and, and you feel off in any ways, go get your iron levels checked, especially women, because of menstruating, we're we are biologically iron deficient, many of us anyway. So go talk to your doctor about that. You may need to take a supplement. Um, a lot of vegans might need to take a B12 supplement. Go outside, get your sunshine, your vitamin D regularly. But again, disclaimer, Adam and I are not nutritionists. There is one thing I do want to show you that helped me a lot. So there's a website called Chronometer. Again, link in the, the is, is in the description. And it's a really, really good nutritional tracker source that basically you would put in whatever it is you're going to eat. And afterwards, it sort of tallies up everything and it tells you like how much you've consumed of everything. So let's go to broccoli, broccoli, like our, our calcium, like superpower food. And, you know, you put in the, the quantity that you've eaten, it gives you your calorie count over here. And then over here, it'll tell you everything else that you've eaten. But weird. here, let's check out these veggie burgers. Cool. Yeah, I bought some prepackaged veggie burgers. They were expensive, but sometimes it's great to have those in your freezer. Just just, you know, handy that you can something you can heat up really quickly. But yeah, so basically, whatever it is that you eat, it will tell you your your nutritional count for it. And then it gets even more detailed in terms of like the breakdown of your fiber, your carbs, the vitamins that you've gotten out of it. And, and it's a free tracker and that's it. That's, that's really it. There's things that you can, you can make that uh, you can also, it tracks your, your exercising and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's, that's basically it. It's, it's super simple to use. And then at the end of the day, it totals up everything you've eaten. And so I had an 818 calorie surplus despite spending that day juggling, stretching, doing some calisthenics and going ice skating. And all of the plant-based deliciousness that I ate gave me hundreds of percentages over, over everything. Now there were a few things that like, like my Ninja oatmeal, which I didn't entirely, like it doesn't have 991 calories, it has less, but I didn't put in the, the, the counts, right, of, of the things that I'd put in the oatmeal. And so, yeah, I put in far too much protein, which is also like not a great thing. Don't eat too much of, of any of these things. So use this nutritional tracker and it will, it will help you immensely in terms of figuring out what you need to eat. I don't really use it anymore because I find that I eat the same things all the time. <laughs> but if there is a point where I'm exercising more and I do maybe want to try to get, get add, uh, gain some weight, you can actually put your goals into this into this program and it'll it'll help you out with that. And it'll tell you what you should be eating to, to meet those goals. So I highly, highly recommend it. OK, yeah. And so I've never used Chronometer, actually, but uh, I just want to give you guys some some really simple, practical tips on how you can get started trying out being vegan. Number one is you just simply start paying attention to what's in your food. Start reading product labels and get to know the contents of what you're buying. If it has an animal product in it, well, just simply try finding a similar product without the animal food in it. And let's see. yeah, perfect. Um, learn. So this is this is for me because I, I love tofu is learn how to flavor and cook tofu. It's it's super versatile, satisfying and healthy. You can cut tofu in cubes or slices depending on how you want it. Tofu absorbs the flavors of any sauce you want to add to it during cooking and tofu when cooked well and flavored nicely is super delicious and super satisfying. Number three. Ditch dairy milk. There are loads of tasty alternatives to dairy milk that are much better for the environment and way better for the cows. It's as simple as when you're at the dairy section, you see it, just simply look across the aisle and there's a whole crap load of wonderful vegan plant milks available for you. So just, just pick one of those up instead of the dairy milk. Number four, which was really hard for me, but eventually I did it and it was awesome. Give up eggs and start making smoothies in the morning. I had a hard time giving up on eggs because eggs was part of my morning routine. I would have two or three scrambled eggs with some cheese on top. That was that was me from the age of literally like five years old until, until 22 when I became vegan. So instead nowadays, I make a delicious and filling smoothie loaded with fruit and veg. It's a much better way to start the day because smoothies don't contain cholesterol. <laughs> also eggs can easily be substituted in most recipes. Good go-tos that are substitutes for eggs are flax seeds or bananas if the dish is sweet. And number five is consider vegan snacks. Instead of getting chips containing milk, just look on the back, see if it contains milk, just don't get that chip. Get a different chip that is vegan. There's loads of vegan chips. Instead of cow milk ice cream like Mariana was talking about, try a vegan ice cream. You want to get beef jerky? Just try the vegan jerky. It literally tastes the same and the texture is the exact same as well. Nuts and seeds also make a great snack food and contain great amounts of protein and good fats. 
And, and not all vegan food is healthy. So if you're craving junk food, there's tons of options for that too. Like beef jerky and vegan jerky, like feel and, and taste the same, you know, so you're still getting that fix. And so, yeah, Adam, Adam's showing you guys some, <laughs> yeah, there's a meme of vegan <laughs> reading labels at the grocery store. Yeah. Like, like my grocery trips might take a bit more time now because I end up reading the labels of everything I pick up, but I end up getting more value for my dollar too, because I'll look at things. And if I'm, especially if I'm traveling in a country that's expensive, like if I'm, if I'm in Switzerland and I know that 50 euros is going to get me like two days worth of food, I'm going to buy things that are going to give me a higher calorie count and more protein. So if I have two products, I will actually look at, and I will look at and see which one for the same amount of money or for the same amount of food quanti quantity will give me a higher protein value. And yeah, when in doubt, just fry all your veggies in some, in some good oil and let the flavors do their thing. Like right now we're showing you guys the, I just like the taste of meat starter kit, which is just basically like figuring out what to do with different spices. So there's tons of recipes. Um, if any of you guys like look at Buzzfeed, they've often got like 30 easiest vegan dinner recipes and that kind of stuff. So there's tons of really good, like easy vegan recipes that you can just like type that in and search, search that up. Yeah. And can I that? Yeah. Yeah. Most people um, think they love the taste of meat so much, but what they really love is, is how meat is often flavored with, with paprika and with onions and garlic and all the different seasonings that they put on meat. What you find out when you go vegan is you just take those same season seasonings, put them on the plant protein, and you've got something that tastes the same, and then there's no cruelty and there's no environmental, there's less environmental cost, and it's just, it's just objectively better, and it tastes like literally the same. So I yeah. just wanted to throw that in. Thanks, Adam. Yeah. Yeah, friends. So to the Omni curious, I think we may have come up with like a hundred good reasons to go vegan and to the vegans and tr tr transitioning allies. Hopefully we've given you guys some new information to think about and some new material to, to spread the word. So as far as reasons to eat meat, I guess the, the only things I can think about that a meat eater would say that we don't maybe don't have an answer for is I like it and it tastes good. But I think we actually do have an answer for that. And it's just to, to ask another question. And the question is simple. What do you as a person value more? Do you value sensory, just simple transient taste pleasure? Or do you value an animal's life more? Because when you consume meat, you're choosing taste over life. So just ask yourself that question seriously. I think the vast majority of people come to the conclusion that they do value the life of an animal more than they value a simple transitory taste pleasure that goes away in 10 minutes. Yeah, it's... it's it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. Once you've gone vegan and, and, and you've kind of had this realization that you feel like you have this, this, this great secret that you want to share with everybody and, and not everybody's ready for it. And, and the approach is, you know, is important. So, you know, for me, especially in my circle of friends and, and among Slackliners, it feels to me like more and more people in the world are going vegan. But it's still it's still a very new phenomenon it, it, and it, it can be hard to discuss with people and because a lot of people get defensive or they just they think you're being judgmental. And, and the fact is, you're like, no, I just think this is bad and I know that this is bad and I want to share this information. And and so, you know, just before we we officially started the broadcast, Adam and I were talking about how we were all sort of deceived growing up because we think that, you know, animals come from this happy farm and then when they die, then their bodies used to feed people and, and it's not the case and, and that's what's particularly gross about it all that we don't know and now we do and now we can use that information to empower ourselves and to and to be better humans so there are two main youtubers that really show sort of the, the two temperaments to discussing veganism there's uh, earthling ed and joey carbstrong and Earthling Ed has a very patient and gentle approach, and Joey Carbstrong brings his swagger from his gangster past. And both seem to have really solid success with their respective approaches. <laughs> yeah, this is what it feels like explaining veganism sometimes, like you're, you're talking to a wall, but that's cool. We're, we're getting there. So thanks, Adam. So these are, these are our two dudes. These are, our, our, you know, arguably probably the two most popular uh, vegan activists on YouTube. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's really interesting listening to their interactions with people. I really, I really recommend following these guys and watching, watching what they do, their approaches, listening to some of the dialogues that they get into with people. So the guy on the left, Earthling Ed, he shows a lot more sympathy and understanding towards people who question him about veganism. He's really patient. He's a really chill dude. And, and Joey's full of rage. Like when he talks about animal products as food, like Joey looks like he's like this close to like, 
punching you if you don't agree with him but but it's it's just it's his demeanor but it's it's really effective because what he's talking about is that bad it's that gross you know and and for us as for myself as a vegan you know i'm sure adam can agree that it's hard not to be angry because to me as a vegan, a, ch- a chicken leg is a body part, like ground beef is flesh and, and cheese is the fermented pus of a cow that was raped by a machine after having her baby taken away from her. And so I have to sit there and smile at dinner parties with non-vegans while I eat at a table that's full of things that came from death and rape. but it's people's food and people are sensitive about it and they don't necessarily know how to get around it. You know, so sometimes I do want to be cheeky and offensive but I understand that. And I I need to be patient that I can't talk about those things in a cheeky and offensive way, like Leo DiCaprio. Um, No one likes being told what to do. And they don't like being told that what they've known their entire life and what they've been doing their entire life is wrong. But instead, I think we can show good examples. I think, you know, if you are an amazing vegan cook, like make some delicious snacks, bring them to your Slackline meetups, like share with your friends. Um, you know, patiently answer people's questions when they ask you about it. Um, Share what you know about facts and science. Uh, I find a lot of times, like if I'm, if I'm, you know, eating with, with, with colleagues that are very much meat lovers, you know, I might get some sort of snide comment and it's cool. You know, I'll just say, yeah, my food, my food's really delicious. You can try it. And that's it. You know, I just don't, don't get into it with people who, who want to be initially argumentative about it. But I find that if I guide people, if we can guide people towards understanding and making a decision that they come to on their own and they'll be thrilled about, then it'll be a lot more effective. Yeah, that's totally it. Like we can only show show people the door and you must go through the door. So we can only show you the way. And to those of us who have stuck with us throughout this entire presentation, first of all, I just want to say super thank you. That's awesome. And we want to give you resources to help better communicate being vegan to your friends and family, perhaps if you are a vegan and you're watching this. I hope some of our talking points have inspired ideas for how you can approach conversing with a family member or a friend. But if you need some extra encouragement, check out those YouTubers that Mariana recommended because they're both super awesome and they use very opposite approaches. Um, but there are, of course, loads of resources online. So touch base with me or even Mariana if you want more help finding what you're looking for. Uh, for me personally, I've been doing a lot of activism over the last year. And of course, I've learned a lot about it. Though at times it's really hard and depressing to have to confront the the really horrible reality about what's going on on this planet and how terrible it is. It's also super rewarding when you realize that you have done something really good in this world. You've helped someone, you know, make the change and commit to not eating animals. And I just think it's awesome. So, yeah, helping to save the world feels good. Who would have thought? <laughs> Here's just a couple of pictures of me. This is uh, this is called the Cube of Truth with Anonymous for the Voiceless. It's a, it's a static demonstration where uh, people wearing masks hold screens depicting a horrible footage of factory farms and the mistreatment of animals that goes on. Myself, uh, I'm an outreacher and I'll stand kind of on the outside of the cube. And if people are watching for a while, then I'll approach them and we'll start having a, a conversation about whether or not they think it's okay. You know, how they think they could they could maybe change this because we all do have the power to change this. It takes everybody, but it starts with you. It's one person at a time. Um, I've also done some like solo activism. I printed myself a big sign and went to Trinity Bellwoods Park, which is a big park in Toronto and had some great chats with people. And it was, it was actually super friendly and cordial. And yeah, I think I've, I think I've changed a lot of minds and it it feels really good. Um, Was I? (laughs) So if you want to get more involved with activism, I recommend two things. First, you find your local slaughterhouse and search for vigil events that may go on there. A vigil event is simply you go with a group of activists and you simply pay your respects and you bear witness to the animals that are being carted into the slaughterhouse on their massive you know, supply trucks. Uh, it's a super powerful experience. Of course, it's really depressing. It might, might bring you to tears, but it's a very motivating experience because it really forces you to confront the reality of what's going on. And of course, you'll meet other vegans in your community. Number two is search for Anonymous for the Voiceless. They're a, an international group. They've got, uh, I think, thousands of, of cubes that they do across the planet. So it's very likely that you're living in a city that has the cube of truth in it. Um, to me, it's the best form of activism that I've seen to date. And it really helps you practice your activism chops in a safe space. Yeah, there's a guy named Derek Simnet. And shout out to him because he's he's a guy from Western Canada. He his his he's also about saving the animals, very much an animal activist. In and that's the sort of the 
the main thing that he got into was wanting to be a vegan bodybuilder that also, you know, he started nutrition, he's a dietitian. He's got excellent recipes. Like his food's amazing. And, you know, he's got a lot of videos on, on what he does to train and eat, what I eat to fuel my active vegan life. So yeah, I would highly recommend this. I'll add this in the description as well. I totally forgot to mention that. And but, he's ripped. He, and he's ripped. Like this guy's huge. Um, so friends, Adam, thank you so much for sharing, sharing about your animal activism. Like it's, it's, yeah, dude, it's, I can, I can imagine that it is, it is just so rewarding and, and being able to, you have an excellent approach with how you talk to people. I really appreciate you joining us here today. I'm sure people have questions. So friends in the, in the chat, I've posted our hangouts right now where Adam and I are. If anyone, if any of you would like to join us and continue this discussion, maybe see, you know, maybe you can, you can share some information with us. Maybe there's something we didn't discuss. Maybe there's something that, that, you would like to know more about we're happy to hang out for for another few minutes here on google hangouts and and chat with everybody and yeah yeah, yeah. again adam thanks for your work thank you to all of you who are vegan who are spreading the message remember peace peace begins on your plate so let's uh let's keep spreading the gospel that's it thank, thank you, you so much everybody